Today we're gonna to be working with a product that I personally have never had my hands on before this moment. This is Intel's NUC 9 Extreme, and inside is one of the most powerful mobile processors in the world. Can it power a fully capable 1440p gaming machine? We're gonna find that out today. Corsair introduces their newest RGB infused peripheral to help you get a leg up on the competition, the Dark Core RGB Pro. An 18,000 DPI PixArt optical sensor gives you unparalleled precision, while the interchangeable side grips mean that you could customize the look and feel of the Dark Core to meet your needs. You also get premium features like USB-C charging, switches rated for 50 million clicks, eight programmable buttons, 50 hours of battery life, and onboard profile storage. Check out the link below or head to Corsair.com to learn more. Thanks for coming by and checking out this week's PC build video. If you like gaming PC builds, video editing PC builds, and all kinds of different PC builds, make sure you get subscribed to the channel so you don't miss it. We do these kinds of projects every single week here at BPS Customs. This week, we are taking a look at Intel's NUC 9 Extreme. Now these come in a couple of different varieties. You can get the i5, the i7, or this i9 version, but inside of it is a mobile processor, which normally you'd say, I don't really think that that's gonna be great for a PC build, but this is a little bit different. This is the 9980HK in here, and although it is a mobile class processor and thus doesn't consume quite as much power, it's still eight cores and 16 threads with a rated boost clock of five gigahertz. This thing is no joke. It definitely can't compare to something like a 10th gen 10900K. In fact, this is the previous generation's 14 nanometer process. However, it is still a very capable processor. You can then populate this board with SODIMM memory, which we have here on the table, as well as M.2 SSDs, and you can create yourself quite a tiny little powerhouse. What is special about the Intel ninth generation NUC is that they've partnered with a couple of different manufacturers to create cases that especially are built for housing these. Now you can buy this in a self-contained system that comes with an Intel daughter board that you plug this into. This is essentially a PCIe device, but Cooler Master has come out with something called the NC100. Now the NC100 is a special form factor case that only is built for these. Basically there is a daughter board at the base that you could plug the NUC into as well as a full size graphics card. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. We have an RTX 2080, not the super version, but I think we'll do just fine with the regular 2080. And it's gonna go really well with our eight core 16 thread 9980HK. Now, the NC100 from Coolmaster, like I said, specially designed for this purpose, comes with a 650 watt fully modular 80 plus gold rated power supply. There are two fans at the top to help with exhaust and temperature regulation inside. And Coolmaster built their own proprietary daughter board to go at the bottom so that everything plugs in and lines up just like it should. It also has some interesting lighting effects. There's actually like an underglow effect that goes on down there, but we are more interested in the thermal side of things because even though this is a 45 watt CPU, which is quite a bit lower than the desktop variant, it is still gonna generate a lot of heat and the cooling solution on this NUC unit isn't that robust. So given that we're putting it in a small case, is it gonna be able to thermoregulate? We're not entirely sure, and we're definitely gonna test that. Now, to go along with our 9980HK hmm? processor in our NUC 9 Extreme, we've got the RTX 2080, we've got a one terabyte Western Digital Blue M.2 NVMe SSD, and 32 gigs of Crucial Ballistics DDR4 SODIMs. This is a 3200 speed kit, and this is just gonna be awesome for use inside of this kind of a small form factor build. I've done small form factor builds before uh, or projects that need so dims, and you don't often get the opportunity to put 32 gigs of memory in a system like this. So I think this combination of hardware is gonna be really good for testing out 1440p gaming and seeing if this kind of a system is actually capable of something like that without thermal throttling itself to death. Also, take a look at what's on the table. There is a definite lack of stuff. Usually when we do these builds, I got boxes everywhere, there's all kinds of components, and this is a very self-contained project. There's not a whole lot you need to add because 
The case comes with fans, it comes with a power supply. This is a motherboard and CPU all in one. And all you need to basically add are these two things and you're ready to rock because there is integrated graphics on the 9980HK. This is not required to get this up and running, but it is required if we want to power through some AAA titles. So let's get this thing put together and then we're going to test it. We're going to test it pretty thoroughly for thermals and performance. And uh, I'm going to stop talking now, so go. So let's talk Intel NUC build. This one was fun, if not a little bit frustrating, but let's first touch on performance because that I think is the aspect of this kind of a system where you could look at it and say, this was a definite success. Obviously we're dealing with an eight core 16 thread processor and an RTX 2080. You would expect to have decent frame rates in games. And of course we definitely did. All of these games were tested at 1440p and ultra settings. And just to run down quickly, what we saw when we were doing our testing, Ghost Recon Wildlands, average of 56.5 frames per second, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 92 frames per second on average, Far Cry, New Dawn, 98 frames per second on average, Doom Eternal fluctuates a lot, but generally we were seeing over 150 frames per second on average. They use Sex Mankind Divided, 70 frames per second on average, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey, 54 FPS on average. Now the first and last of those tests, Ghost Recon Wildlands and Assassin's Creed Odyssey, both very difficult benchmarks to run. I will note that in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I saw some terrible frame time spikes, and as a result, the footage that I was capturing was extremely choppy, and I, I wasn't really sure what was happening. I went back, I ran the benchmark a couple of times. The same behavior exhibited itself every single time I ran it. I didn't see this in other games. So I was pretty satisfied with the performance otherwise, but especially in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and I don't know if this would carry over to other titles. This was definitely not really a very playable experience, even though the frame rate was decent for that kind of a game. Uh, it just wasn't it wasn't pleasant to look at. It, just, it was very choppy and, and, um, and uneven. Now I can't say for sure, but it's certainly possible that the, some of the reason for that inconsistency was that we were seeing some significant CPU clock throttling due to temperatures. And this was just while gaming. So you're not gonna see a huge CPU load while gaming, but apparently there was a lot of heat generated within the case and the 9980HK was actually hitting between 80 and 90 degrees Celsius just while playing games. This caused it to throttle down below 3000 megahertz, 24, 2800 megahertz a lot of the time while just running games. And unfortunately, I think that definitely contributed to uneven frame times. On the other hand, our GPU did maintain fairly good temperatures, of course, the GPU fans are pointed directly out the side of the case. So basically they are intaking fresh air. 
we would expect the GPU to be able to maintain itself pretty well, and indeed it did. Boost clock stayed relatively high, and temperatures were between 50 and 60 degrees while gaming. This is pretty good, especially for a small form factor build. One of the reasons that we saw CPU temperatures get so high, especially relative to the GPU temperatures, is because of the positioning of the exhaust from the NUC. It basically exhausts directly into the side of the GPU or the backside of the GPU, and it creates kind of a pocket of hot air inside of this case. Now, Coolmaster did try to solve this by including this little shroud, I guess, that's supposed to direct the airflow. The, the NUC module is supposed to sit behind this. This piece of really kind of cheap plastic is not a great solution. Not necessarily because the planning of it is bad. I think this is generally a good idea, but because of the materials are so flimsy and the fact that this large piece here, when I tried to install it in the case, it, it was impossible to install it without around all the wiring and then it would cover up the section of the nook at the end where you have to plug in everything. So either you could probably install it fine without having everything plugged in, and then you wouldn't be able to plug things in, or you plug everything in first, and then all the wires get in the way of you installing this shroud. So I actually, unfortunately, broke it while trying to do the install and eventually just kind of gave up. But I did want to give the case a chance to exhibit its best case cooling scenario. So what I did was I ran some stress tests with it in its current configuration. So I just ran Cinebench on a loop and unfortunately, immediately within the first pass, the CPU throttled. It was up to 91 degrees. It throttled all the way down uh, to 3.1 gigahertz, stayed there and averaged out at about 81 Celsius while not exceeding 3.1 gigahertz which is a little disappointing, especially considering that this CPU can boost quite a bit higher. Then I took the GPU out completely. So it's not like I was running the GPU with this little cooling shroud in place. I just let the CPU breathe as much as it possibly could. Took the GPU out, ran it, ran it off of the integrated graphics, and it exhibited basically the same behavior. So we were getting 88 Celsius instead of a 91 Celsius spike, and then it throttled down to 3.2 gigahertz, still within the very first Cinebench loop. I didn't even have to let it run for any great length of time. And then it settled around 79 Celsius. So you're talking maybe a two degree improvement on the CPU just by removing the GPU entirely. That is really not significant considering what you're losing by taking out the GPU. And I really doubt that using this cooling shroud would change that in any meaningful way and it's such a pain to use and it's so flimsy and poorly built that, you know, I, I really don't think that this is something that you should even really mess with, to be honest with you. Didn't really make much of a difference and it was kind of a pain. But other than that though, the NC100 is a really solidly built case. It comes with two fans at the top. The steel panels feel really nice and sturdy. The white paint looks excellent. No unevenness or anything like that. The color uniformity is really good. The included power supply, 650 watt gold, it is modular for whatever that's worth in case you're not plugging some things in. You could certainly unplug some cables, have a little bit more room in there. But things do get cramped. It is a small form factor build and you could expect that. I'm not faulting Cooling Master for a cramped setting in here. But you know, our GPU was not the biggest GPU. The, the Founders Edition 2080 is decently sized, but it's not the longest. And even with just that in there, things, got a little bit difficult to, to maneuver around and plug in. Um, but, you know, I, like I said, you would definitely expect that with, with a build like this. And, and it looks really good on a desk, I think. This is, this is definitely a, a handsome piece to put next to a really nice monitor, maybe for some productivity work or something like that. But I am really glad that I got to check out the Intel NUC 9 Extreme with the i9-9980HK and build in the Cooler Master NC100. I think this was a really, interesting experience because this isn't a form factor that you often see a gaming PC come in. And this is certainly a capable machine. You do have to deal with some thermal issues, however, and I'm not entirely sure how to fix that just considering the layout of this case. It's not like you can move things around. The Cooler Master daughter board that sits at the bottom of this that the NUC plugs into and the GPU plugs into, it can't be moved. You can't reorient this in any way. So this is kind of what you get. 
And if you're gonna be running some CPU intensive tasks, you are definitely gonna run into some problems. Just let's say if you were to use this as uh, to, to render out Adobe Premiere projects, I think you would have some struggles on your hands uh, as you had some thermal limitations and the CPU is not gonna clock very high and you know, your workflow might struggle as a result. But you know, if you just wanna use this as a gaming box, it can definitely put out some decent frame rates in some really high end games. And it's really cool. Like it's it's definitely something that's different. And I applaud Cooler Master for going in this direction. And I do like the NUC form factor. Um, you know, it's it's fun to to build with alternative ways of putting together a PC every now and then. So what do you guys think of the Intel NUC and the Cooler Master NC100 build? Is this something that you'd be interested in? Is the form factor? Uh, interesting enough for you to overlook some of the thermal issues, let me know down below in the comments. Also, don't forget to get subscribed to the channel if you are not already. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll be back next week with another build.